Thank you for the introduction. Good morning. I'm h y u n g t e Kim from Asa Medical Center in Seoul. Thank you for the inviting me to be here today at NRAS. It's a great honor. Today, I will be talking about the clinical benefits associated with anesthetic techniques for hip fracture surgery. I have no complex of interest. First, I'd like to talk about the mortality rate of hip fracture surgery and the post-surgical occurrence of complications like a sterilium and the guidelines for managing hip fracture surgery. So let's take a look at mortality and morbidity as outcomes of hip fracture surgery. Some prospective studies have demonstrated a reduction in major mortality and morbidity with regional compared with general anesthesia for hip fracture. For this reason, <coughs> sorry, until now, we have tended to think that regional anesthesia is better for hip fracture surgery. Perhaps the first report on fracture outcomes was this article, which was published in Anesthesiology in 2000. The authors evaluated the effect of various types of anesthesia on post-operative mortality and morbidity in a retrospective court study of con consecutive hip fracture patients aged 60 years or older who underwent surgical repair at 20 U.S. hospitals between 1983 and 1993. The primary outcome was death within 30 days of the operating procedure. As a result, the authors were unable to dem demonstrate that regional anesthesia was associated with better outcomes than general anesthesia in this large observational study in an elderly population with hip fracture. The authors Mm, the authors evaluated the effect of various types of anesthesia on post-operative mortality. Uh, sorry. Mm. In 2012, Dr. Dr. Mark D. Newman began a comparative study on regional and general anesthesia in, in hip fracture surgery. As we mentioned later, Dr. Newman is currently conducting a study called REGAIN and I hope. In a review of more than uh, 18,000 patients undergoing surgery for hip fracture in New York in 2007 and 2008, the use of regional anesthesia was associated with a uh, 25 to 29% reduction in major pulmonary complications and deaths. Regional anesthesia is associated with a lower risk of inpatient mortality and pulmonary complications among all hip fracture patients compared with general anesthesia. And in 2014, Dr. Newman identified the risk of in-hospital mortality in adults undergoing hip fracture surgery across the United States. 73,284 adults undergoing hip fracture surgery on hospital day two or greater between 2007 and 2011. Of those, 84% oh, received general anesthesia and 9.5% regional anesthesia and 6.5% combined general and regional anesthesia. The in-hospital death rate did not differ between the three methods. And there was no difference in elder patient ages over 75. In this larger nationwide sample of hospital admissions, mortality risk did not differ significantly by anesthesia type among patients undergoing hip fracture surgery. Since hip fracture is an emergence, Patients usually go to a nearby hospital. However, hospitals will typically conduct procedures with their preferred anesthesia method. Here, orange circle corresponds to patients regarding an area relatively close to hospitals that specialize in general anesthesia, while the blue circles correspond to patients residing in area close to hospitals specializing in regional anesthesia. 
Um, this is a retrospective course study of patient over the age of 50 who underwent hip fracture surgery at General Acute Care Hospitals in New York State between July 1st, 2004 and December 31st, 2011. Of the uh, 56,729 patients, 28% received regional anesthesia and 72% received general anesthesia. Among adults in acute care hospitals in New York State undergoing hip repair, the use of regional anesthesia compared with general anesthesia was now associated with lower 30 day mortality, but was associated with a modest short term length of stay. This population-based core study using linked administrative data in Ontario, Canada, identified all fracture patients ages 65 or older from 2002 to 2014. The authors identified 107,317 hip fracture surgery patients from eight different hospitals ages over 65 years who had a valid anesthesia type entered in their DAD record. Neurological anesthesia without concurrent general anesthesia was used in 53% uh, patient. Overall neurological anesthesia used increased from 40% in 2002 to uh, 53% in 2013 and 2014. Across hospitals in Ontario, Canada, the rate of neurological anesthesia used for hip fracture surgery varied from zero to 100%. Hip fracture surgery patients at hospitals that use more than 20 to 25 percent neurological anesthesia have improved survival independent of patient level anesthesia type and other compounders. According to an article published in, in Anesthesia in 2020, there was no significant difference in 30 or uh, 90 day mortality in patients who received spinal rather than general anesthesia. The REGAIN trial is an international multicenter pragmatic randomized control trial. The primary outcome is composite of death or new inability to walk 10 feet or across the room at 60 days after randomization. The secondary outcomes, uh, as you can see here, yeah. recruitment began in February 2016 and continues until the end of 2019. This is the result of the Regain trial. Dr. Newman published the result of a study in New England Journal of Medicine in 2021 comparing spinal and general anesthesia on the working ability of elderly patients undergoing hip fracture surgery. The authors concluded the spinal anesthesia for hip fracture surgery in older individuals was not superior to general anesthesia with respect to survival or recovery of ambulation at 60 days. The incidence of post-operative delirium was similar between the two types of anesthesia. There was no difference between the two groups in primary outcomes, spinal anesthesia and general anesthesia, and also no difference between the two groups in the secondary outcomes, including new onset post-operative delirium. The IHOPE trial is sister trial of Regate, which seeks to enroll hip fracture patients across Germany to study outcomes depending on regional or general anesthesia. 1,032 hip fracture patients was randomized for spinal or general anesthesia. The primary endpoint is the time to the first event of the binary composite outcome of all cause mortality or new onset serious cardiac and pulmonary complications within 30 post-operative period. The study started in April 2018 um, with a total recruitment period of 24 months. It has not presented yet. I am waiting the result of this trial. The most recent BJA systematic review and meta-analysis reported no difference between spinal anesthesia and general anesthesia in fracture surgery. Next, let's look at delirium and pain as outcomes of hip fracture surgery. 
Dr. Newman says he found similar working and survival post-operative outcomes at 60 days follow-up in both spinal anesthesia and general anesthesia for hip fracture surgery in the Regain trial. He then published a study in 2022 comparing pain, analytic use, and satisfaction after hip fracture surgery in spinal and general anesthesia. He concluded that spinal anesthesia was associated with more pain in the first 24 hours after surgery and more prescription analysis use at 60 days follow-up comparing compared with general anesthesia. However, if you look here, the mean difference is 0.40. This will decrease further from the second day of POD. There may be compounders not examined here, such as opioid prescription and discharge and delivery of physical therapy. Another point to highlight is that opioid use during surgery was much higher in the general anesthesia group. This Raga study is probably the most famous study of post-operative delirium in hip fracture surgery. In a study of 950 patients over 65 undergoing hip fracture surgery, Sorry. The authors concluded that regional anesthesia without sedation did not significantly reduce the incidence of post-operative delirium compared with general anesthesia. However, our hospital data shows the rest delirium in the regional low group group. In 2012, uh, 2000, 2022, a study was published in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland using prospective data on 107,028 patients from the nation hip fracture database, which records all hip fracture in patients aged 60 or older. Again, there was no difference in mortality between spinal and general anesthesia. However, compared with general anesthesia, Spinal anesthesia decreased the risk of delirium, increased the likelihood of mobilization day one post-operatively, shortened hospitalization, and improved the likelihood of returning to their residence upon discharge. Generally, it is said that so, the so-called seven A's can prevent delirium. Proper pain management is very important to prevent delirium, Open sparing techniques are especially important, and regional anesthesia plays a key role. Acetaminophen is also recommended to be administered every six to eight hours. Avoid administration of IV opioids. Anticholinergics, benzodiazepines, antihistamines, and antipsychotics, being delirium-causing drugs, should also be avoided. Here is a recently published meta-analysis on the effect of FICB. Statistically significant reduction in mean morphine equivalent was observed in those with FICB compared with the control group. The rate of delirium was 9.2% in, in patients with FICB compared with 19% in the control group representing a 52% reduction. FICB was significantly protective in reducing nose and vomiting by 58% compared with the control group. The average reduction in hospital stay was 1.61 for patients with an FICB compared with the control group. But this was not statistically significant. Lastly, let's look at the guidelines for managing hip fracture surgery. This guideline is famous, but that's already 10 years old. So now, it's finally been updated 10 years later. The guideline discussed in more detail analgesia, anesthesia, surgical delay, blood management and transfusion threshold, echocardiography, anticoagulant and antiparietal management, and post-operative discharge. And recommendations are given in this way. 
single low blocks are supported by multiple RCTs and reviews. Single low blocks should be provided in the emergency department at the time of surgery. Pimer low block and FICB should be used. Peng block have not been compared with either FICB or Pimer low blocks in trial talk today and do not pro provide analgesia to the surgical incident site. The use of ultrasound is recommended. Paper low blocks should be used routinely to supplement general or spinal anesthesia. The benefits of local infiltration analgesia have not been formally assessed in the hip fracture population. There is a little evidence at present for the use of continuous nerve techniques. Here is an Asa Medical Center protocol for the management of hip fracture surgery. Single cell nerve blocks are provided to the patient before surgery. If the patient is not operated on that day, but rather the following day, the single cell nerve blocks will be provided the day before surgery. Although it is recommended as a guideline, our research result also did not confirm the superiority of pain block, so now we routinely perform sprinkler approaches, FICB. We perform FICB on the day of surgery. Whether it's general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia, we perform the blocks before surgery. So now let's briefly summarize. Difference in outcome between anesthesia type is small among hip fracture surgery. Paper low blocks should be used routinely to supplement for both general or spinal anesthesia. Paper low blocks possibly reduce the instance of post operative delirium among elder hip fracture patients. Paper low blocks reduce post operative opioid consumption and related adverse events. It's time to move away from using opioid analgesia in the elderly patient and regional anesthesia give us the opportunity. I'd like to return to talk here again if given the opportunity. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention. Mm.